I was thinking about horror movie icons the other day and who I think reigns supreme. Of course you've got Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers and James Corden, but I think the best of them all is this guy. Megan. The Chuck star has always had a special place in my heart, so I thought it would be fun to make one of my all time favourites into something I'm calling a film frame. Even though it's technically like a book nook, but it's made with a picture frame, and like the frame of a film, so it's like a, a pun too, and, and like I, I think- Welcome back to Midnight Hobbies, and today I'll be making a film frame inspired by the brilliant climax of Child's Play 2. To start off, I grabbed this $2 frame that was made with love. Oh, that's nice. Now, I did go through a couple of concepts for the frame before falling for this masterpiece, but let me know in the comments any film frames you might like to see in the future. Now on to the build. I punched out the pane of glass, and since windows aren't great at standing sill, I anchored it with a sheet of foam board as a base. Come on, just... Come on, just... So after measuring the frame and transferring those numbers to the foam, I was left with a perfectly cut platform. Its support is a bit questionable though, but some smaller strips sliced to size should alleviate that problem, leaving me with this fun little stage. I then built up the walls with more foam board cut with a purposeful slope so that I could create a forced perspective that felt similar of those inescapable factory holes in the film. But it's not a good guy factory without some good guys. So on my computer, I whipped up this panel of stacked boxes that I then stretched to fit the scale of the forced perspective. And after printing it out and folding it into shape, I placed it into the space to test whether it could work. Looks so good you could almost fall in. Happy that this might possibly work, I stuck the side panels in place. But before gluing the back, I thought it would be cool if there was an eerie factory door at the end. So taking it aside, I cut out a door frame that I then punched out with- oh, so, sorry, that usually works. Um, I, I casually removed the excess before dressing it up with some tissue boxes trim, including extra panels above the door that I thought could house a non-functional emergency light. But this looks familiar. More packaging cardboard as some decorative beams, and then with a ball of foil in hand, I textured all of the walls, which is something I definitely should have done before sticking them in place. With some springy foam sheet, I added the trim to the top of the wall panels, before going in with some more packaging cardboard beams cut to different widths to further accentuate the depth. And with the back wall finally glued in place, it was time to return to my cupboard of endless cardboard packaging to make the boxes. Ow. For fun, I tried to find the spookiest box I had on hand. Oh, that's not very spooky. <laughs> and after dissecting its innards, I stuck the box templates inside and cut them out, and used a ruler to keep the folds clean. To give them a bit more dimension, I went in with some sculpting tools to indent the edges around each box before gluing the edges together. I then whipped up this little foam cover to block the back of the doorway and any light from shining through. And with the bulk out of the way, it was time to make a floor. I stretched out some air dry clay with my hands before rolling it out with a pencil until I was left with this lovely lasagna sheet I could shove into the space. Any excess was trimmed away, and then I used my finger to massage the clay into any areas it didn't cover. I aggressively jabbed it with a coarse brush to get some texture, before pressing the boxes into it to save their spots. Then using some other sculpting tools I had lying around, I rolled and prodded until I had an adequate concrete texture. For the roof, I'm using this leftover cut from my midsummer build that was then sketched, dissected and fit into place. And with the offcuts, I made these industrial beams that could fit snugly under the roof. Now, as it dried, I was hoping to get some cracks from the clay for free weathering, but as a cruel joke, it gave me one singular large crack across the center. Still works for me though. So now it's on to priming, and... Wait, do you guys hear that? Sounds like it's coming from... Yeah, well, whatever it is, it must have gone... I yanked out all of the bits and bobs before taping off the frame with some masking tape. And then after mixing together some classic Mod Podge and paint, I smothered all previously mentioned bits and bobs until adequately covered, ensuring I stippled along the way to remove any possible brush strokes I may have left behind. I then scrubbed the deck with a dark grey, before using the same paint mixed with some white to paint the walls. And using the boxes as a reference point, I taped off some path lines before dabbing on some yellow paint with a small piece of foam. 
This was then followed with a light grey dry brush as well as a white top off to make those edges truly pop. The white dry brush was also applied to the walls before I went in with some blue for the beams. Then a tasteless yellow green for the door frame and a less regrettable red for the panel. I then whipped out the metallic silver for the alarm plate as well as for hitting the edges of the beams to give them some wear and tear. This factory may not necessarily be screen accurate to a T, but for my depiction I like to think this factory has been abandoned for a long time. I then began painting the beams with that gross green and oh, oh god. So I dumped that idea and went back in with a much more suitable red. I then fell in love with my red saviour so much that I thought it would suit the trim of the walls as well. And then to truly hide all of those painful memories I covered what remained of the green doorway with silver. Then some more silver dry brushing on the rest of the pieces before going in with the foam again to add some more chipping. The roof got a dabbing of some grey and white, and a little piece of clay for the emergency light got covered in some gloss red. But now it was time to make these good guys the bad guys. I tackled all of the edges of each box with a muddy brown and built up a dirty gradient to help accentuate the distance between boxes when it's in the frame. The same brown was used to grease up the floors, and now we all know how much Chucky loves his sausage rolls, so I grabbed some glossy ketchup to build up a sauce trail leading into the door. That's what it is. Ketchup. The door was made out of leftover cardboard and foam sheet and received cautionary stripes at the bottom and a general coat of silver. Then as a fun easter egg for my own mistakes, I painted the door strips with that vengeful green. And you know what? It doesn't look too bad. It also got some little spills of ketchup and then I glued all of the pieces into place, ensuring to give some grime to the roof and walls as I went. Oh thank goodness. Using this template glued onto more card, I tore at the front panel of the box to imply our little man of mischief has broken out, and then glued the edges as implied, leaving me with this little tic-tac box of terror. This good guy got quite the griming, and then because I couldn't help myself, two batteries I made out of clay and silver paint got a little label as well, because unlike most toys, these batteries are included. Now with all these toys ready to terrorise the neighbourhood, I stuck them into place and hit them with the beauty shots. I hope you enjoyed this quote unquote film frame build as much as I did. I wouldn't mind turning more of these into a smaller series between larger builds, but let me know. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to keep up with all the other mayhem I make in the future. Take care everyone, and I'll see you soon. He's slimy.